Our next speaker is Coach Sean Bell, tight end coach, Baylor University. I had the pleasure of working for Sean with, with Sean for the last three years at Baylor, and he is a great young coach. Former great quarterback at Baylor, has made the transition to coaching in the offensive line, and uh, has done a tremendous job. He's a bright young guy, coached at five, head coach at five different high schools in the state of Texas, and that means a lot. Uh, Sean's topic today is going to be gap schemes from a wing. And uh, this is something that he uh, has done a great job with at, uh, at Baylor. And uh, I think you'll get a great job of it as a way to run the ball when you have to run the ball. Sean Bell, Baylor University. Hey, fellas, Coach Sean Bell here from Baylor University. I am now the tight ends coach. The past two years, I've served as the offensive line coach under Coach Rule and worked alongside Coach DeLeon, and it's a treat and a privilege to be here. I know last clinic, I got a ton of stuff out of it, and I know you guys are anxious to see what all's in store from me and, and the clinic speakers today. So I want to start with a special thanks to Coach Aranda for allowing this clinic to continue. I know it's a new one this year with uh, all the – things going on in the country and things going on uh, in, you know, where you're at. So I pray that your families are safe, you're healthy, but also get hope that you're getting quali good quality time with them. And I uh, hope you also get something great out of this clinic. And guys that don't know Coach DeLeon very well, um, I hope you know that, that I thought I loved football, knew football, cared about football. And then I met Coach DeLeon and he taught me what that really meant. And he's a guy I've learned so much from in the last three years, really cherish his friendship and his mentorship. And I know that, uh, you know, I've really grown as a coach because of him. So to speak on it on Baylor's behalf in this clinic today that represents him and has his name on it really means a lot. He asked me to speak about uh, his favorite play of football, guys that know him and have been around him. This is his favorite play, so that's also an honor. You know, every week as we game plan, this play was up because it's good against everybody. It's good against anything. And uh, Coach DeLeon is a firm believer of this play. And this play led to us adapting it to, to fit our offense and, We've changed it and, and, and kind of morphed it into what fit us. And it also helped us win 11 ball games and play in the Sugar Bowl this year. So I definitely hope that you get, it, get something out of this and uh, can use it for your offense and help you win a lot of football games. If you do know a lot about Coach DeLeon, you know that he's highly upset that I'm talking about him and I'm not talking about football right now. So let's get started. So this play we're going to start with is called Hammer, okay? This is a gap schemes to a wing, which is essentially just two tight ends. Um, our, it started for us three years ago when Coach Rule took over here at Baylor. He brought this play in from Temple. And it started as a short yardage goal line play for us, and we called it Hammer. It's where we're running it to a wing. It was 22 personnel run, heavy run, and we had great success with it our first two years. Well, as, we, as our offense changed and as teams kind of got familiar with this, we had to kind of change who we were offensively at times and adapt uh, that play to our offense. And how we did that was we morphed it into these two things here at the bottom. We morphed it into RPOs off the QB running the power. So we get out of 22 personnel and get in 12 personnel and run the exact same play, but with the quarterback, and then allow RPOs on the perimeter to where people had to cover our threats at wideout, but still have that hardcore run action at you. And then also implemented it into a wing uh, where we ran the counter with an RPO. And we'll talk about all those things today. So. Like I said, it kind of started as a short yardage goal line package for us, and you're going to see some great clips of it um, there. And we were in 22, 23 personnel, and then it, and then it just developed into something that I think was was very successful and helped us help lead us to the Sugar Bowl last year. So, so let's talk about the hammer play, Coach DeLeon's play. Uh, it's a 22 or it could be a 23 personnel gap scheme play, just essentially power. Okay, and we want to talk about why. So a lot of people are wondering why. Why would you ever get in 22 personnel? Why would you get in 23 personnel? Why would you run this play, okay? Well, the first thing is it's a guaranteed run, right? In today's offense, I know we got a lot of guys on here that are RPO guys. We've got, you know, it's an O-line clinic, but I know a lot of you guys are out there and, and your offensive coordinators or even quarterback coaches, and you're in an RPO-heavy offense to where the defense can dictate to you if you run the football or not. Well, this play is a play where you know you're running the football. It's a guaranteed handoff, and there's certain situations to where you're going to have to run the football. You know, I coached high school football for a long time before uh, – I had the opportunity to move up into the college ranks, and I always thought to win a championship, you had to run the football for a multitude of reasons. But one of those, quite simply, is it's going to get cold, and you had to be able to run it. And there, you're going to be, you know, it's going to be fourth and one. You got to be able to run it. It's going to be, you know, four minute offense. You're going to have to run it. Well, Hammer provides you an opportunity where they know it, you know it, 
Everybody knows you're running the football, and you can still guarantee the run and be successful. It allows your offensive linemen, tight ends, fullbacks to come rocking off the football. You know, it's a gap scheme. Obviously, there's not a ton of thinking to it. There's not a lot of processing going to it. It allows you to really rock off the football and create that physical mindset you want in your program and you want from your offensive line. It also allows you to match up numbers in the run game. You know, as you pull around there and one back power, you're blocking six for six, and two back power, you're blocking sevens for seven. Well, in this in this instance here, you know, a lot of times our guards pulling around for the safety, and we're getting hats on hats and uh, really getting everybody accounted for in the run game. And then last, it's creating extra gaps. It's a uh, you know, the defense has to adjust on the move to a tight end and now a wing, so you've created two new gaps. Now a fullback who's kicking out, a pulling guard, which is inserting and creating two extra gaps. So I think that, uh, you know, with all the moving parts, you're going to see some clips here to where we didn't block it right. You know, the defense fitted up correctly. But with all the moving parts and, and, and all, the, all the things coming at them, they didn't make the play, and it, it, it led to big runs and big plays for our offense. So I know you got a, a lot of guys out there probably going to play with a tight end. Probably can't even count to 22 to get in 22 personnel. But I think uh, this is a play I've really enjoyed to learn. And I think as you learn the basis of the beginning of the play, you can create it and mold it to where it can match your offense like we did. So this is our hammer play again. Uh, two years ago with, with Jalen Hurd, average 4.5 yards a carry. Uh, we, that's The most we ran it was uh, in, in 18. We ran it 36 times, 69% efficient. Uh, we – and when, when, we, when we chart our runs, we look at really two things for efficient runs. One, if it's a first down or base down, uh, we're trying to get four-plus yards. That means it got more than four yards or more, or it reached the goal for that down. For instance, it was third and one, we got two. You know, fourth and one, we got three. So it, it reached our goal for that down and distance or was efficient uh, by getting four or plus yards. So 69% of the times we ran it. And the good thing was, like I said, a lot of these were ran in – you know, four-minute situations and, and run-down situations. We know we're running it. They know we're running it, and we're still highly efficient in what we did. A couple quick coaching points to the run. Obviously, under center, a lot of you guys probably just turned off the video when I said that, but uh, we start under center, and you'll see some clips in a little bit to where we incorporate it into the gun, and I know you guys will like that. Um, but we started under center. We Same thing. It's fourth and one. We want to get under center. We want to set that mindset. We want to protect the football. And, and so we get under center to start the play. Um, quarterback's footwork, I'm going to go fast, uh, reverse out, give up the A-gap. The running back is pressing the A-gap so the quarterback can't open up and close off the A-gap. I think that's a big coaching point for the quarterback. He can't over-reverse out. He's got to give the open A-gap to the back. Handoff, obviously, when, his hand, when he hands it off, his offhand's tight, and then he's going to burst away to sell the naked away from it. Our running back coaching points, and these are some minor ones, but there's one big one. Um, toes at seven and a half yards, that allows the kick out and the insert by the guard, that time to develop. His footwork is to drop step and then go. And that same thing, that drop step allows the guard to get around there. But the most important thing in this football play is whoever's running the football, whether it be your quarterback, your running back, is to, for him to be in the inside hip of the puller. So the whole key is if he's in front of the puller, the play's not going to be successful. There's clips on here. I'll show you where if the back was slower, they would be huge gains. The back's a little bit fast. He's got to make an extra cut to get back inside of that puller. So the number one rule, stay inside the hip of that puller. So on gap schemes, I think, you know, it's an O-line clinic, so I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking O-line. And uh, in a clinic scenario, I wouldn't probably have this much words on a slide, but since we're all remote, I think this is a chance for you to, you know, take notes and really read and see um, in this presentation. But Obviously, we put a big emphasis on down blocks. And to be honest with you, this is something that we got from Coach DeLeon's clinic last year. Some of this terminology, some of the way we, we coached this this past year, we got from the same clinic you're listening to now. Okay, So on our down blocks on the front side of our gap scheme, the most important two things that we want to do is we want to stop penetration and eliminate cross face. Very simple. Stop penetration and eliminate cross face. Our down block, our aiming point, it obviously varies by alignment and technique of the defender. Okay, our base rule is as I'm going to down block on a defender, I'm going to aim for his near shoulder, so the shoulder nearest to me. I got to understand the most important thing I got to realize through film study, through stance, through alignment, is he a penetrator or is he a reader? Is he a penetrator or is he a reader? Okay, so if he's a penetrator, if he's a penetrator um, or a defender on your body, then we're going to now go to the V of the neck. So if I work to that shoulder, obviously I'm going to be too far behind the block. So if he's a penetrator or he's on my body, now I'm going to aim to the near V of his neck to work my hat across just a little bit more. Our footwork, we're always trying to create angles even if it's just slight. So we're going to get our feet in the ground fast. We're going to position step, mirror second step in the ground, 
and the speed is crucial. So we're trying to get our first two steps. Everything we talk about as an O-line is our first two steps. Bam, 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 bam. Everything we do, first two steps. Get my two steps in the ground. Create energy, create power with those first two steps, and I've got to beat them to the spot, okay? And then our hands, this is what we probably coach the most, to be honest with you. Uh, two years ago, I probably didn't do a good enough job of the detail of the hand placement, where I put my hands, how I drive a defender out of there. But it really came down to two ways we taught how we down block. Is he off my body? Is he on my body? That's the first thing, obviously. And then is he a penetrator or a reader? So if the defender was off my body, then I'm going to drive my inside hand to his heart, right? So it's right, almost right to his heart. My outside hand's now going to the fat of my back, of his back. And when I say fat of his back, everybody's got, I, Lord knows I do, okay? This fat area right here, that's where I'm driving that backside hand, to the fat of his back. If he's a penetrator, then I'm going to think inside hand to the far peck. That helps me get my hat in front. So I'm going to be a little bit further with my front side hand, obviously. With my hand shoot, my head also follows and gets my head in front of the defender. If the defender is on my body, Okay, I'm going to take my inside hand to the far peck, just like you did um, if it was a penetrator. Now my outside of my hand is going to go to the, fat, uh, to the curve of the armpit, right underneath the armpit. So I'm not going to be behind the block because he's, so he's, uh, he's on my body. He's more in front of me. I'm going to bring it tighter right underneath uh, the curve of the armpit. And then I'm going to press with my back hand, uh, backside hand first and then transition to play side hand. Because he's on my body, he's obviously closer to where the ball's being ran. So I'm trying to get him knocked this way. So the backside hand is where I'm gonna press with the most, most importantly to start with, to get the thing started as I shoot my hands, and then transition to my play side hand as I engage him and I drive him through the drive phase. And then obviously, you're gonna be prepared to, you gotta stop the cross phase. Obviously, as soon as they feel the down block, we gotta stop his initial charge, but then expect him to fight back over the top and then we always talk about surge finishing in all our blocks. So that's our aiming point, footwork, and hands that we look for on our down blocks. That goes for our guards, our, our, our centers on a back block, our tackles, our, both our tight ends in this play that you'll see. All right, so our play, our, our number one play we ran to a wing uh, these past three years is hammer, okay? Hammer is a, uh, like it says here in the, in the, in the picture, it could be a 22 or 23 personnel run. Um, and I've got it broken up here to where you're going to see it to four down fronts and three down fronts. So let's just go through the scheme here. A lot of you guys run gap schemes, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm expecting you to know quite a bit of this stuff. But it all starts with, obviously, who we're working to, who our double teams are going to. But it all starts with when we identify the front, four down or three down. Is the guard covered? Is it a three technique? Is it a two eye? Is it a shade? So that, that alignment on the guard determines where our double team happens. So essentially on this play, we want two double teams. That's the best thing about this play. We're creating two double teams, okay? So anytime we get a three technique in this over front, in this first picture here, we're going to what we said was deuce. We're going to this right guard, right tackle, we're going to deuce to the backside backer, just like all power plays. Nothing changes there. What we taught our guys on gap scheme plays was for that tackle, if he's head up or a, or a tight three on, on – on most of our gap schemes, he could gallop. But on hammer, we came rocking off the ball. We were four hands, four eye. I mean, we were engaging that three technique, that two, that two eye, or that two technique, excuse me. And we wanted to come rocking off the ball with pad level. So we did not gallop the tackle on hammer. He, we tried to engage it, get as many hands on, and, 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 and move the line of scrimmage. Okay? For the, the tight end and the, uh, and the wing, their role was as follows. Everybody on the front side – is obviously responsible for the inside gap to the designated linebacker, okay? So our tight end's rule was he's responsible for the C-gap. And if, if he's not in a double team with the tackle, which in a, in a, in a true over front he's not going to be, then he's going to be in a quad to the mic, okay? A quad to the mic. And what a quad means is that him and the wing are going to double team that end to the mic. And that's what we want. We want the quad, okay? I'm going to talk about the, the wing in a second. But what we taught that tight end was exactly like you taught your guard on a on a what we call a deuce. He's going to drive his first step up the field, second step into the ground, and he's going to engage that guy just like he does on a deuce and, 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 and really knock the end back and be ready to slide off on the Sam. So nothing really different between the right guard and the right tight end if you had a three technique and a nine technique. Obviously with a seven technique, an inside eye, or six technique, he's going to position step inside, work his hat inside, and drive him. Okay? Now let's talk about the quad by the wing, the Z in this picture. He's responsible for the D-gap, all right? When he hears deuce, obviously we know we have a quad. It's a four-down front. 
the quad, he is going to – he's responsible for the D-gap. Let me start there, okay? He is going – when we say quad, 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 and he quads to the mic, he is going to gallop. When I say gallop, he's not going to turn his shoulders and engage the defensive end. If he's got a wide nine, he might bring his hands, but he's going to stay square and really try to not color over to that, ta that tackle to where he can work square to the mic, right? But what we really want is a nine technique, obviously, where we can engage with four hands and, 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 and put him in the lap of the mic, but very rarely happens. But, so we, we tell the wing if, he's, if, if, if it's a seven technique, a tight six, then we can gallop it. But if he's a nine, then we're going to wear it out on the quad. The wing's responsibility is he is running a track to the mic. Okay, so if we don't say quad, he knows I'm running a track to the mic. So I've got the D-gap to the mic. If anything crosses his face, he's responsible for it, just like all gap schemes. So if that Sam run throughs, he's responsible for it. If that corner wing bus, he's responsible for it. And so as we ran these plays and teams line up in his wing alignments, obviously defenses are going to have adjustments to the wing. The first adjustment is, and this is a corner here, a lot of times for us it would be a strong safety or a flat Sam, like in the next picture. If there's something in your gap, you're responsible for. So we we the tie, the wing is in charge of the of the uh, wing buster. It had the the mo most important thing here is he's going to collect it if it shows up, but he's not going to turn out on it. So if I go to step down in my D gap and that wi that wing buster stays behind me, outside of me, then I'm carrying on to to the mic. I'm carrying on to the mic, and I'm gonna leave that for the fullback. So I'm not going to turn out on any wing buster. If the wing buster chooses me, he's in front of me, then I'm going to engage him and I'm going to drive him, and I'm going to collect it. So that's the most important thing. So a lot of times our fullback will go out there to kick a wing buster and the wing buster disappears and he's kicking a corner. And then here we go, our guards around to the same. So a lot of different things can happen there. But the most important thing, two things for the wing. I'm running a track to the mic. If anything, if anything runs through my track, a wing buster, a run through, I'm responsible for it. If the wing buster is behind me, outside of me, I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna collect it. I'm gonna bypass it. I'm gonna stay square on my alignment to the mic. And we all know with that pulling guard and this action, that mic's going to fly over the top. All right, so that's how we blocked it to a 4-3 over. Anytime we got an under front, and you'll see in a second an odd front, okay? And I didn't talk about the fullback. Let's just talk about the fullback. He's kicking out the first defender outside the wing. And that can change, obviously. So a lot of times that Sam will line up outside the wing. He thinks he's kicking the Sam. The Sam wing bus, he goes and kicks the corner. Or the corner rifle, it, whatever shows up, he's got to be tight on the track and it's like a banana. He's down into the line of scrimmage. If he's working to the right, he's kicking right. If he's working to the left, he's kicking left with his left shoulder. Okay. And the under front, we go from a deuce to a tray. So my guard is now on the true down block all by himself. Center still blocking back. Uh, gap pins by the tackle. I'll talk about that in a second. Then the, then the double team on the under front turns into a tray. So now we're in a tray between the tight end and the tackle. So the wing now knows, hey, you know what? I didn't, I didn't get a quad call. I'm not involved in the double team. So I'm running a track to the mic. On my track, if the Sam wing bus, I collect the Sam. I'm going to engage it. I'm going to knock it back. I'm responsible for the Sam. If the Sam stays outside, the fullback will kick it, and I'll run my track to my mic, just like we talked about in a second. So let's talk about this gap hinge. So what we're telling this backside tackle on this gap hinge is this is a three-step progression. So he's going to step first flat and lateral with his inside foot, immediately okay so he's going to step first flat with that inside foot then bring his set gather his second step okay and then on the third step he's pivoting out you're going to see a couple reps of this so it's a three-step progression we taught him um, when we were doing we were doing our uh, gap hinge on the back side and so what our purpose is on that hinge and you guys all run power you know this but he's taking responsibility for any b gap run through or backside run through and he's also allowing if we have a backside three technique for the center to get back there. So you'll see that three-step progression as we go through the film. All right, so here's a couple looks at, uh, you know, as you learn about this play, as this play evolved, you know, you look at the scoreboard, it's it was a four-minute offense for us, it was a short yardage offense for us, play for us, and sometimes we would just call it in the middle of the game when we really wanted to set a tone. And so here's an instance towards the end of the game where we're trying to set the tone and really, you know, put the hammer down on, on Vandy and, um, so we call hammer. And so here it is out of 22 personnel. You're going to see it in multitude of uh, formations. You're going to see it in 23 personnel. You're going to see it with X over and unbalanced formation. But here's here's the basics of the play, all right? So to start with, as you see here to the right over here, you know, a lot of you guys may say, hey, coach, this is a great play, but I got, you know, I want to be powerful. I want to be under center, but 
I really don't have more than one tight end. So what we we had the same problem, and what we decided to do was to put a sixth lineman in the game. You can put that sixth lineman in as a tight end, or you can move your you know best maybe down blocking uh, tight end type tackle, and then put the sixth lineman as the backside tackle, which we did in this instance. And so um, here's the play. Here's Hammer, and then also same thing with fullback. You know this is a guy that started it. Um, he started it defense for us but we got a couple reps for him as, as an iso fullback and lead fullback and developed him into a fullback we also had a our backup for this formation was a defensive lineman that we just trained for a few plays and so here's a look at hammer to four down what we told this guard on this deuce so anytime it's four down we were deucing so we want to tell him with this inside foot he's going to put it up pick it up and put it down as fast as he can so he's driving this left foot as fast as he can up and down the field then his backside foot is going to drive through the crotch of the defender, just like you guys know from the post standpoint. All right, the, the right tackle here in this instance, he's going to drive his left foot, and then he wants to drive his third step to the crotch of the defender. So essentially, our goal is when we make contact on his third step and on his second step in the crotch of the defender, to be half a man on this 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 three technique to move him backwards, okay, and knock him back. You'll see some of our clips is what you know is going to happen on the back side is they're going to flow, right? They're going to flow. So, so many times as you teach this play, these double teams, the guys think that they need to go at that angle to, to the backside linebacker. When in actuality, it's always vertical. It is a vertical double team. He's going to fit over the top and meet you there, all right? So, let's go through the play. Um, let's start at the left tackle here. Here's the gap hinge I talked about. So, there's that three-step progression. There's no immediate B-gap threat, but it's just a quick one, two, three, and then he's hinging on the back side. No B-gap threat. The center's blocking back. The, center, the right guard gets a slant by the three. We've got movement. We'll talk about the, the, the wing here in a second. But we get movement on the front side here. So he collects the three, the right tackle. I like for him to get a little bit more square, but it's a good job capturing the backside linebacker. Okay, let's go to the tight end in the wing. So the tight end lines up, and he goes, okay, deuce, deuce, deuce. They should be thinking quad, quad to the, to the linebacker. So they should be saying right now, quad to him. Boom, quad to him. However, like I told you, so many teams' adjustment to when you play these wing gap schemes is they're going to have a wing buster in the front side. So that quad may get used up by a wing buster. In this instance, there's the wing buster. Okay? I'd like for 76 to have his pads down. I'd like for his backside hand to be in the fat of his back. And this is exactly the down block we talked about. So see how he doesn't have his backside hand. 76, his right hand is so high. He's so worried about getting his head across that he's not worried about the backside hand and the, and, the, and the fall back over the top. Not not bad by the wing on collecting the wing buster. And then the fullback's just running his track. So there's the fullback running his track. There's the kick out. The backside guard, we haven't talked about this pull. You know, I know a lot of you guys run power. You run counter. You tell this backside, tack, this backside guard on the powers to skip pull. We told him to rip and run. The reason being is he's got to get around two double teams. Okay, he's got to get around a double team by the guard and tackle, and he's got to get around a quad. And then I want you as tight off that quad as you can be. I mean, you want to scrape the paint off the wing of that quad. And then he's pulling for play side linebacker. However, he could get used up by the wing, and if he does, then you're pulling for the safety. Okay, so as you pull around there, you're thinking play side linebacker, but you're going to block what happens. So in this instance, the play side linebacker gets used up by the by the kick out here. So he's running his track as the fullback gets the kick out. The backside guard gets around the quad, squares it up. Now, he gets in this instance here to where that's his play side linebacker who's used up. One of the things we talk about on pool schemes, and this shows up in one back power, and it shows, shows up here as well, is if he's engaged and you see color, what we like to say is we use the term swab the hole. So if there's something in that gap right there where's color, swab the hole, explode through color, and clean it up. Just clean up the hole. I thought the guard did a pretty good job here just cleaning up the hole and then trying to go get more. And as you see here, because the back's patience, he's behind the backside guard, it really sorts out nicely to where we get a big football play. He picks up his feet there, have a chance to keep running. Obviously, with ball security is not a part of an O-line clinic, but you got to have it. Same play. Now we change it up just a little bit. Okay. Now we attach the backside tight end to make it a uh, uh, 23 personnel run for us. The only thing we told him on the back side was you're just in a gap hinge. So we have two gap hinges on the back side. Everything on the front side stays the same. And then we got a little bit of window dressing with this motion here just to change up the look for the defense. Okay, Let's start on the back side here. 
Backside tight end, 99, was also a lineman. So we, we in this instance here, we had seven linemen in the game for this short yardage. And this is fourth and one. Game on the line, fourth and one. We want to create an extra gap on the backside to where we can't get ran down. So here, we, let's talk through the play here, okay? Four down front. We would be thinking here, we're in a trade to the backside linebacker. So trade to the backside linebacker who's obviously walked up. However, he also sees color threatening his gap. So as I'm this right tackle, this right tight end, we're thinking trade, trade, trade because it's an under front like I showed you. But he's got an immediate threat, and he's almost covered at the point of attack. So instant, uh, ideally, we would say, hey, you know, you're there. You're thinking he's going to play your gap. You're overtaking. You're running a track to the mic. Fullback is kicking, first thing outside, and then 55 is pulling for the corner. Okay, that's ideally what we want to see. Now, as you see on the backside here, this is a tremendous job by the backside tackle. Watch the backside tackle, 69. He has a B-gap threat, a three technique, so he's thinking gap hinge, but then he has a backside run through. Well, then he's got to engage this three and overtake this three because the center is going to get used up by the run through, which is a great job by the backside tackle. Not great on our, uh, on our tray here. By 77, you see his feet die on contact, the right tackle. I'd like for his pad level to be fixed. And in 76, you'd like for him to have some awareness here. Okay? So because the, the, the wing and the tight end don't get used, they both get used up on the quad. We don't get the tight end engaged on the six. And the wing doesn't run a track to the mic. The pulling guard still pulls to his back or who he's pulling for. So now the back is one-on-one -on -one with the corner. Once again, behind the guard. Split step. Behind the guard. Because he's behind the guard, None of this is blocked up perfectly. Obviously, the million technical errors we'd like to fix. Because he's behind the guard, he got a chance for a big football play. If he picks up his feet, he runs it in on fourth and one. So that's the play to two, four down, over and under. Here it was this year. Okay, Same front, over front. We walk up here. We're saying deuce, deuce, deuce to the backside linebacker. Okay, Here's what we want. We want the nine technique backside. You're going to see this clip in a second. 91 loot does, avoids the nine technique. What I would tell him is exactly what I told you the guard to do with a three technique. He's going to drive his left foot straight up the field, right foot straight up the field, and then he's going to snap off on this quad to the play side linebacker. With a nine technique, 87 should think, hey, no gallop. To hell with the gallop. i got to engage this thing. This is a quad. I'm going to own the nine. I've got to really engage it four hands and explode through this thing. But watch as 91 comes off of this. Watch the tight end, who was also a lineman that we converted. Okay, watch the tight end here as he comes off of this. He avoids the nine, so it puts the tight end in bind, but the good thing is the tight end doesn't allow penetration, which gives us a chance. The fullback needs to be tighter, off the wing, and then 52 here pulls for the play side linebacker. Good job by the back, staying behind the guard. Another instance here, this was the middle of the game. First and 10, minus 20, just a chance to set the tone physically. Big football play. So this is how the play started. This is how the play derived. It started as this, as a goal line short yardage, and then a tone center for our football team. And you're going to see it evolve as time goes. All right, what we also see a lot of is bare fronts, okay? Because we ran this, because we ran this too, in the goal line short yardage, we, we, uh, we saw a lot of bare fronts in this picture. All right, so here, here's the same play as we, as we changed the front, and these are all going to be odd and bare fronts for you. Anytime we've got a bare front, the center will make a call back down. Okay, so you see it down here, back down. What that tells us is a couple things. The back is talking to the center that he's blocking back, the guard's blocking down, and obviously the tackle's blocking down. That's the first thing. So everybody's blocking basically back, back. They've got their down blocks. The second thing is it tells this quad here our guard and our tackle are used up. So there's no double team to the backside linebacker. So when I hear back down, now my quad is now going to the backside linebacker. Okay, so back down. Now we're running a track to the backside linebacker. Nothing changes for the fullback or the backside guard on a back down call. When we get an odd front, it's almost essentially like the under. Okay, center blocks back, gap hinge. We're trained to the backside linebacker. The wing is still running his track to the mic. If he gets used up by a wing buster, he'll take him, and the guard's pulling for the mic to the safety if, he's, if, if, if the mic's blocked. Okay, so here's some clips of it at three down now. This is what we saw a lot. So anytime we saw it, sent in our, our hammer personnel, our heavy personnel, we would we would get sometimes goal line looks, sometimes we get short yardage looks, but also there's teams that played their base defense and tried to stun into it and blitz into it. Okay, so here's a bare front. 
the sinner's going to walk up here. He's going to say, back down. As soon as he says back down, he's telling everybody he's got a, he's, it's a bare front. He's going back for the three. He's telling the guard he's coming down. He's telling the play side tackle he's coming down. Okay? It should alert the front side tight end and wing that they are now in a quad to the back side linebacker. Okay? However, as you see here, they both have threats in their gap. So immediate threat in my gap, I've got 44. Wing's got immediate threat in his gap, a wing buster, 5. Okay? 69 on the backside should gap hinge this. And there's a good look in the backside of the gap hinge of just giving that center time on the back block. All right. Fullback, he's kicking the first thing outside the wing. It's already declared itself. It's the corner in this instance. And then the guard is pulling for the play side linebacker, which in this instance shows up to be the safety. Okay? This was a third and one minus 39, okay? And we're getting our, one of our best football players matched up on their backside linebacker who has to fit through some trash. And we're gonna, we feel confident in that matchup to get one. The backs got to make, in this instance, they gave us a good look. They used up everybody and got the backside linebacker free. The backs got to get one. But the key is he's got to be behind the guard. If he's behind the guard, he's got a chance. So as you watch it from the end zone, third and one, there's a scenario, down two. Got to convert. The back meets him for a first down. And it turns into an explosive and almost a touchdown. Explosive football out of 22 personnel and into a wing. Here it is, same year against uh, Iowa State. So here was their look. Okay, here was their look. They kind of came out in a bare look with mugged up linebackers. Okay, so exotic looks we're seeing here. Mugged up linebacker, mugged up linebacker. And what they were doing was they were keying the guard. As soon as the guard pulled... He's fitting over the top fast. As soon as his guard blocked down, he's fitting the gap as fast as he can. And then two's fitting over the top based on the fullback. Okay? So as you see this, we treated it as bear. We had to get this drawn up. This was the first clip of it. But we treated it as bear. Center blocks back. Okay? Back down. Tackles working down to 23. Down on three. He's running a track to the mic. Uh-oh, wing buster. There he is. If he busts, if he busts the wing, then I'm going to collect it. And then the guard is going to pull for what would be play side linebacker in this instance shows to, to be two. So here it is. Gap hinge on the back side just like always. So here is uh, third and one. Because the back is behind the guard, I don't like to pull by the guard. I have way too much space between him and the wing. But because the back is behind the guard and patient, the back side linebacker, by the way, this is a safety. This is a safety. So this is their base personnel. They're asking their safety to come down here and play big boy football, keying guards, playing like a linebacker, and it fit this thing perfectly on third and one. I like the matchup of a 220, 230-pound running back on a backside safety for one yard. Here, the backside safety overruns it. Another explosive on third and one into a wing. Here it is from the sideline. Pretty good job by the tight end on the wing buster. Engaging this. No penetration. Obviously, any gap scheme, no penetration on the front side of the gap. Okay, another way to incorporate this is using unbalanced sets. Okay, what I like about unbalanced sets is we did multiple things out of this, and I'll talk about it when I go to the end zone, but the unbalanced set, they still gotta they still gotta occupy, they still gotta account for our mismatch out there. So if they're gonna go one on one, we're gonna take our shot. Okay. The other thing it does is it pulls some of the contained uh, force defenders out in the run game. So now, you know, they, they work it to this set, and the corner's the force, and then the safety's the force, and then we go X across. That pulls the corner and the safety, and now they got to fit it differently. So this is another thing we like to do. So there's just a look at it in an unbalanced set. He's in an MDM out there. He's in a push crack, uh, the corner of the safety. So let's go to the end zone. Out of this formation, I mentioned it a second ago, we would do different things. And not just out of unbalanced, but, you know, if you overloaded, we would run, you know, the, the, the hammer top, hammer flip to where we sell hammer, pull the guard, jab step, and then we're pitching it out the back door like some of you guys see. We'd run weak side ISO. We would take our shot to the X, whether it be an unbalanced or not unbalanced. But in this instance, we went unbalanced and just ran the hammer play. All right, so let's dial this up. Same thing, bare front. We treated it as bear. Back down. Back down. You're down. Tack, tight ends down. I want you to watch this. Here's the whole key to the play. 
87 is running a track to two. But you saw in the last clip, same game, okay, same game, he got chosen by the wing buster, okay? So he got chosen by the wing buster. So watch 87 how he doesn't track to the mic. He's kind of slow. Is he wing busting? Is he not wing busting? And this kills us. It's a detriment to the play for two reasons, okay? He makes everything cloudy. So number one, he's cloudy. Is he engaged? Is he not engaged? If he's behind me, let it go. Go get square up on the mic. If he's, if he's in front of me, collect it. In this instance, he puts the fullback in no man's land and the backside guard in no man's land. I'd rather him right now run that track to the mic, hit, put, hit two right underneath his chin strap with some urgency, let 38 be tight, kick it out, and then 57's pulling for the safety, who we're also MDMing for. We get everything blocked. But watch the wing. This is key. He, number one, he's got to come off the stinking football. That's the first thing. Now let's watch 76, the tight end. No step with his first step. There's a little bit of a slant. Now he's worried about, he doesn't see this guy as a penetrator. He doesn't work his hat across, but it all starts with his footwork. No step with his first step. No step. Should be flat. He's a five technique. He's got to step flat with his left foot, work his hat across, and drive that right hand to the fat of the back. So 38's in no man's land, so we don't get the wing buster blocked. But the ball does bounce and give us a, a chance outside. Why? Because of the unbalanced formation. That's why I'm showing you the clip, how it changes who fits. If this, if this receiver was on the opposite side of the ball, a corner would be there fitting this thing up. But because we went unbalanced, now there's no force. Okay, Kansas, it's a four down front with four eyes. Or excuse me, three down front with four eyes. Almost essentially the same thing as the bear. Okay, in this instance here, okay, back down, center's going back, guard's going down, tackle's going down. The tight end and wing should be quadding to the backside linebacker. There is no alert of a wing buster. The tight end right now knows, the wing knows, there is no wing buster right here. Quad, quad, quad. Quad, quad, quad. So right here, 76 owns the quad. I want him to work his hat across and drive that second step into the ground. Here's an example right here of where 87, if he feels like that's a tight six, we prefer the gallop. So the wing here, we prefer the gallop. If he sees any color right there, knock it over, and that stays square to the backside linebacker. As you see, he's kind of out of control. He's crossed over. His shoulders are turned. He does block who he's supposed to block, which gives us a chance. Gap hinge on the backside. Good job on the back block by the center. Knocked down by the guard on the down block. Nice tight pass by the kick out. And as you see, if the back would be behind the guard, guard does a pretty decent job being tight around the quad. Could be tight. I take that back. Should be tighter. But if the guard was, if the back was a little bit more patient behind the guard, this thing scores. So if he's behind the guard here and doesn't have to make the cut that he's about to make. If he's here, he's running that thing north and south. Does and he he's he's gone. He's that's six points for the Bears. But the cuts because he's in front of the guard. Same look, same game. Okay, let's talk through this now. So, same thing on the backside. Gap hinge, down block. 77, crossed over. The right tackle's crossed over. His pads aren't in the ground. His feet aren't in the ground. And then once again, 87 just out of control. So this is where we want to gallop. I'm showing you this to show you what not to do at the wing. We want the wing to gallop with that head up six or an inside I seven technique to stay square as he runs a track to the backside linebacker on this back down call. 55 locks on. This was third and one. First down for Baylor. All right, a couple adjustments that you have to have on gap schemes, and specifically this play. And I got a clip of it, I'll show you. But on all these plays, how are they going to attack you? A lot of teams try to attack you front side where they bring wing busters, corner off the edge, try to really blow it up front side. But a lot of teams also know if we're running strong side, they're going to now bring weak side pressure, slant the front that way, and try to chase it down from the backside and or beat across your down blocks. Really, that's what they're trying to do, get across your down blocks. You're blocking down, I'm beating across your face. Okay. So this is a way to combat weak side pressure with what we could make a gaps call. All right. A lot of teams in, in, in college football will bring will free safety um, from the weak side in this in, into this into this front to try to, like I said, to, to move across our face, beat us across our face on our down blocks. So we taught the tackle and the center if they felt like 
weak side free, will free safety, weak side pressure, if they, they would alert it with what was called a gaps call. Okay. The gaps call alerts the whole offense, something or whole offensive line and the wing and the tight end. It changes your responsibilities. Okay. The start left to right. When you we make the gaps call, so he sees the wheel walked up. Uh oh, gaps, gaps, gaps. He now normally hinges to the end. But when he makes a gaps call, he now knows, hey, you know what? I'm now going to hinge to the wheel. What gaps tells the center, I and it usually comes with a tight shade. Obviously, if he's crossing face, the tighter he's going to be. But when I make when I hear that gaps call, I make that gaps call, I'm now going to bypass the shade, okay, anticipating him to slant. Now, if he runs through my gap, I'll engage him. If he stays a five and I gap hinge, he'll take the end and we'll we'll take the chance on the wheel running the whole hill. But we're anticipating on the gaps call, the nose, the cross face. So we're going to send our center back to the end. The guard has a three technique. He's walking up there, four down, four down. Deuce, he's thinking I'm deucing with the tackle to the mic. Uh-oh, gaps, gaps, gaps. That tells me the backside nose is going to probably cross the center's face. I'm now just going to block my gap, which will be that backside two eye, which is usually a shade. The tackle would say, okay, deuce, 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 gaps, gaps, gaps. Essentially, we know that the front is all moving to our right when we hear that gaps call on the backside. We know the front is all moving to our right. So instead of now being a deuce, he'll make a tray call. So the deuce now becomes a tray. It's a three technique. Tray. He's still with the tight end. So now they tray to the backside linebacker. He still doesn't change a thing. He's responsible for the D-gap to the play side linebacker. And the fullback, the back, and the guard, nothing changes. So here's a clip of the gaps call. Okay, as you start at the clip here, you look at the left tackle. We call this by either the center or the left tackle. If the center could ID it, he would. If the left tackle saw it, he would. So you see him pointing over here, 63. Look at the left tackle. Gaps, gaps, gaps. He's making the call. Alert pressure. Here comes pressure. Here comes will free safety. So let's go to the end zone here. Amazing thing, it doesn't matter what level you're at. Love this kid to death, 63. He makes the gaps call, which tells him that the end's pinching, center's blocking back, and then he should gap hinge off on 55, and then watch the knucklehead. So we're trying to really not get chased down by the backside. So the center gets the gaps call. Gaps alerts him. Okay, I got movement. I'm expecting the shade to cross face. I'm blocking back on the long stick. The guard gets the gaps call. He would walk up here and go deuce, deuce, deuce. But because of the gaps call, he knows the shade's probably crossing face. The shade's probably crossing face. He should, he should be blocking back just like a back down. As soon as the right tackle hears gaps, he says, okay, deuce, uh-oh, gaps, gaps, gaps. He goes from a deuce to a tray. So he's going to step flat in case this guy doesn't slant inside, but then he's going to lean back and turn it into a tray on the run with the tight end. Obviously, ace, deuce, tray is our communication. So then they're tr traying all the way back. The tight end's running a track to the mic just like he always does. If the nine stays a nine, he'll collect it. If not, he'll run a track to five. So here's a look at the gaps call. Third and two, will free safety. And as you game plan teams, this isn't just for this play. This could be in any of our you know, gap plays. We had this gaps call we used to get people off double teams and get people into gaps to help for movement. But teams are going to – how are they going to attack you? Teams are going to edge pressure you this way into the wing, try to blow it up. And then also they're going to try to chase it down on the backside and slant the front end of the wing. So here's the backside slant with the gaps call. So there's the tray. Look at 77, the right tackle. He steps in case the guy doesn't slant. Then works his second step vertical, gives pressure for the tight end as he trades to the backside backer. I hate the wing here, how soft he is, how high he is, how as you watch his right hand. If you weren't talking about hands on down blocks, hopefully after this presentation you are. But look at his right hand. It should be in the fat of the back. And that little bit of penetration knocks 57 off or else he'd have let up on that safety and we had a big play, probably ran this thing in for a touchdown. But there's the gaps call. So it's alert. As soon as I hear the gaps call, pressure's coming from the backside. We know movement should be working that way. So instead of working vertical double teams, let's get off our double teams. We're really going past one and collecting the movement. Vital for this play and ultimately vital for all gap schemes that you run. All right, so as we went into this year, so you saw a lot of those clips. A lot of those clips 
were uh, Jalen Hurd at running back two years ago. So as we went into this year, obviously Jalen had graduated, and we have some some weapons on the perimeter. Denzel Mims drafted uh, just last week, and we thought, how can we how can we create that that play you just saw and kind of incorporate our offense? Okay. Well, the first thing we thought of was this Q hammer. We had the play in, but we never really ran it, and it really helped our season this year. Um, but here's a, here's what it is, and it's, it, we just called it hammer, but we just tagged Q, just like a lot of you guys probably do. The play is blocked exactly the same as hammer, nothing different. Our calls are the same. The wing does the same thing. The tight end does the same thing. The only thing that changes is, obviously, we're in 12 personnel, so we've got two receivers on the field that become weapons in the pass game. The QB becomes a runner. The running back just becomes the fullback. So you've got to have a willing running back that can be tied off the wing and kick out, and then a quarterback who can run the football, you know, know when to get down, take care of his bodies. But what it really allows you to do is it allows you to spread out the defense to where now you're getting the box that you want, but you can also still have these RPOs that you guys love in all the formations. So I have the Z highlighted here. We would run bubbles here. We would run smash down on the goal line I'd show you. We'd run a, a, a post with that, and we'd run all our RPOs off this. If the quarterback liked it, he would say, hey, he'd, he'd drop back and just throw it. The quarterback didn't like it, he'd run it and, and, and run it. But this was a run first look, but it had to be a layup for us to throw it. Okay, so a couple of uh, a couple numbers here. I think you'll appreciate. Okay, so the last just true hammer was 69 percent. This was 65 percent efficient, 11 to 17. And the ones that weren't efficient were four minute, and sometimes our twos were in. Um, and and it's kind of situations to where they knew we were running it, we knew we were running it, and because we're in 12 personnel, they may have got a little extra hat in there on us. Whereas uh, the 22 personnel, 23 personnel hammer may have been better. But here's the key: we went to this on third down. And seven out of seven on third down. Seven out of seven on third down. So converted a, a ton. You guys, uh, if you follow our, our seasons the last two years, on third and one, you never had to know what we were going to call. We were going to call in fourth and one. We were going to call quarterback sneak every single time. Two years ago, we were 22 of 22 on quarterback sneak. Last year, we got stopped for the first time in two years. But we had one uh, one-time quarterback sneak didn't work. So third and one, fourth and one, we knew what we were going to call. So we had to have a play third and two you know, fourth and two, and this became that play for us. But it also allowed us to have weapons on the edge uh, to, uh, to take advantage of the defense and spread them out. Okay, so here we are, first third down. I'm going to show you third and one against OU. Game on uh, zero to three. It's the first quarter early in the game. We haven't shown this really. We haven't really ran Charlie much. But it's a way to obviously get an extra hat in the run game. Okay. So here as we line up, this game we did it two different ways. You'll see it. We had the game plan to where we had a smash concept out here. If we got zero coverage or a look or leverage that we liked or a matchup that we liked, we had smash down here, and then we had Q hammer into the boundary. The quarterback in this instance, you'll see him. He fake claps. He looks to the sideline. This was called from us. So we said, hey, in this instance right here, it's first down. We, we, we're going to go with the run. Let's not force the throw. Let's guarantee a run here. Just like we always talk about, guarantee a run. So we, we wiped off the smash, don't throw it, and we went with the Q hammer. Let's look at the Q hammer. What I love about it is everybody's doing the exact same thing they do with the exception of the running back. So now all it is, running back now is replacing what the fullback would do. He's running his banana, kicking the first thing outside the wing. The quarterback now, shuffle, shuffle patiently, and just like the back, be, behind, be inside hip of the backside guard. Nothing changes. Now you're the running back. So watch Charlie here. Shuffle, shuffle. I would like for him to be more patient. I like for him to be more patient inside hip of the guard. But you got to have a running back here that's willing to fit it up in there as well. Let's talk through the scheme now. Okay, they almost they went to a little overloaded front here. Play side guard. It's a under front here. So as we talk through this, he's down in the A gap. It should be a trade to the backside linebacker. He's running a track to the mic. He's going to get used up by the um, by the wing buster, obviously, and everybody's going to get used up. You'll see this tight, tight track by the back quarterback inside hip of the guard. Get us a touchdown. So here's the tray. Good job by the play side tackle. Remember, he's in a trade to the backside backer, but he's responsible for anything in the B gap. Good job snapping off on the run through by 76. The left tackle. 91 engages the end, stays on him when the tackle slides off. 
Watch the wing here on the wing buster. Great job eliminating penetration. Look at his left hand. In the fat of the back, accelerating on contact, and getting the knockdown. I'd like for 55, the backside guard, to be way tighter here. If he's way tighter here, we probably walk this thing in with no, no threat of Murray at all. But as you can see, that's a first-round draft pick now, guys. He's got to fight through a lot of trash. Two double teams usually fit over the top and then still have force to knock the runner back. So here's a quarterback matched up, a backside linebacker we don't even block. But he's got a lot of trash to fight through. So I'd like it ideally here, seven to be tighter. If seven's tighter, he's kicking out that safety. Okay, and then the backside guard's pulling around tight and it would show up for nine. But it's, it's like pizza theory, just like anything else, right? If he takes mine, then I'll take his. So it's, it's, it's a pizza theory here on this one. Quarterback should be a little bit slower. Same game, same play. Now we left it up to Charlie. Okay, smash up top. He didn't like the – we didn't eyes it to where he looked to the sideline. He looked out there and said, hey, I see off coverage. Don't like my matchup. I'm going to keep with the run here. So same thing. So now you're incorporating a hardball run. I'm talking downhill physical run with an RPO that I know you guys like. Okay, so let's go through the blocking scheme here. Four down front. Four down front. Okay, deuce to the backside linebacker. Left guard, right foot in the ground. Left foot through the crotch. Deuce. We should be running a quad to the mic. Running back tight off for the corner. Backside guard pulling tight for 10. That's what should happen. Let's watch it. Okay, front side linebacker gets used up on the quad, which is what we want. Backside guard pulls for 10. We just don't get the deuce vertical enough. Deuce doesn't get vertical enough to the backside linebacker. But once again, he's fighting through two double teams. He's fighting through two double teams and a puller. We've created new gaps. We've created him a lot of traffic to fight through to try to make a tackle in a short yardage situation. Love the aggressiveness. Our guys love this play. And another play we'll talk about because a lot of times they're pulling for little guys. So 55 here is a big pulling for a little. Pulling for that safety there, 10. All right, again, uh, here's the same scheme. Now it's out of a different formation, okay? This week we ran it out of, out of this 3 by one formation. We had the ability here to where we put hitches on the outside if we liked them, if we liked the matchup. And then had Q Hammer. So if Charlie had the ability in this instance, he can run Q Hammer, or he can stand up and throw the hitch if there's a gift there. He didn't like the hitch, so he stuck with the Q Hammer. This is first and ten at the 20. Okay? First and ten at the 20. 12 yard gain by the quarterback. Now, obviously, earlier, when you're in a wing set, the corner can come down here and force. So by going three by one, we eliminated the force of the corner. Changing up the force, so if the receiver was over here, now the corner's in the run fit. By going three by one, changed up the force a little bit. We liked it this week a little bit more on a three by one. Against OU, we liked it more on a two by two. All right, let's go to the end zone. Under front, under front, we'll talk about different things. There's the gap hinge on the backside. Guards down on the two eye. We should have a tray between the, the right tackle and the tight end. This is a horse crap tray. I'll talk about it in a second. 86 is running a track to 40. 86 is running a track to 40, back is kicking out, and 61's pulling for a little. That's how it's, that's how it's drawn, uh, drawn up. 56 here doesn't drive his first two steps in the ground. He gets turned, gets crossed over. His second step doesn't drive to the crotch. Way too long of a second step, which gets him crossed over. 91 gets fit over the top because we're not engaged on the double team. 86 to tight end. The wing here does a pretty good job on his track to the mic. And then 61 sees color, which gives us a chance. But should have been blocked up much better. Starts with the tray, and the tight end can't get knocked off. But the tackle's got to do a much better job engaging that five technique in this under front. Better patience by Charlie, you see there, on the inside hip of the guard. And then good job getting north-south. I think he's obviously important. Quarterback knows how to protect himself. No one to take a hit. No one, no one it's needed, no one it's not. All right? 
Here it is down on the goal line. Same thought, same mindset. We had fades on the outside if we wanted them. But Charlie, third and one. He wants to match up. Believes he can go over the top. Okay, we get actually screwed up here. The left tackle and the center get screwed up and make a gaps call. The center thinks it's a gaps called. The left tackle doesn't think it's a gaps call, but the center screws up. So we're in a deuce on the right. Okay, here it is, third and one. We're not blocking the stinking shade. Every level, I'm telling you. So we should be in a deuce, block back, gap hinge, quad to 40. That's how it should be drawn up. Center gets confused, sees the pressure backside, thinks it's a gaps call. Decent movement on the deuce. Don't like the quad by the tight end on the wing. And then you're asking corners and safeties to come down here and play big, big boy football. Not what they like to do. All right, same formation, same play, same thought against TCU. Middle of the field, this is a P and 10. So just a, sorry, this is third and one, excuse me, third and one. We had a lot of different things we did out of this. So out of this formation, we had all of our run game. We also had our pass game, but then we also were able to run our favorite goal line short yardage play, which was hammer. So by making it Q hammer, it, it created all phases to, to stick together and look the same. So it's hard to game plan and hard to get your fits perfect when you don't know what's coming. So in this one, obviously, four down, deuce to the back side, quad to the front side, pulling tight for the play side backer to safety, kicking the first thing that shows up. Good look. I like for 52 to be tighter here. Once again here with this with this uh, wide nine, I like 91 to stay square. There's no reason for him to depart. We need that speed bump. Give that wing just a little bit of a speed bump on the backside and don't, don't allow that penetration on the backside. Pretty decent job by 86 eliminating the penetration though, the wing. If 52 is a little bit tighter, probably get more out of this. A great job by Charlie. You can see this is the third game we ran it. Much better patience. You saw him in OU first time we ran it. And now against TCU, much better patience behind the guard. So there it was, third and one against TCU. Same thought here. Third and two. Now the guard's much tighter. Got it corrected. Now the nine is a six. Like for 86 to probably gallop in this instance, but he does do a great job running a track. Quarterbacks inside the guard, first down. So we had all our, out of that set, we had all of our 12 run game, all of our 12 pass game, and we also had that play, which was hammer. Okay. Then we also, just showing you this, same play, nothing changes. And then we had window dressing where we brought in, obviously, a Wildcat quarterback. There's Charlie out there on the outside. So we're essentially, you know, 12 personnel, but with a Wildcat quarterback, Charlie's widen the force defender. Just a little bit of window dressing you can always do with a little fly sweep motion here, jet sweep, faker motion, and running the same play. This was a four-minute situation where we're trying to run the clock out. Third and two. Horse crap by the quarterback not taking care of the ball. But like I said, this is an O-line clinic. All right, so here under front, same thing by 56. Bad habit of him by a second step. Look how he crossovers on, his, on 56 here. Look how he crosses over on a second step again. Like the second step to be vertical in the crotch. So here again, this is a new tight end. Okay, this is a this was one of our most powerful guys we put out here to really wash this edge down. Really wash this edge down. So if you got those bodies, you can always put them in the tight end. You can put them in eligible. You can put them uh, in a receiver number to make them eligible. You can do whatever you want. But here it is, just a little bit of window dressing. Big play. Four-minute offense. Okay, so the last way we – and you heard me talk about it. The last way we incorporated this to match our offense was, uh, you know, going into our bye week two years ago, we became a heavy counter team. And you guys all run counter. Everybody runs counter. A G2 counter. We ran GY counter. And uh, we found a way to incorporate our hammer play and match it with our counter play, okay? And so same thing. You can do this out of 12 personnel. Um, you can do it with, with the uh, – with the back, you can do it with most. You can do all these different things with it to dress it up. You can have RPOs out here, but essentially what it is is it's counter to a wing now. So it's, it's blocked on the front side the exact same way.
So it's a way to run counter, get an extra cat, a lot of moving parts, but also keep your spread mindset. Okay. And so essentially the guard now is the fullback on the kick out. The tackle is now the backside guard and you're reading the end in a four down front. So it's the same mind, same thought process. There's your kick out like on hammer. There's your guard like on hammer. But now because the tackle's pulling, if you get a four down front, the quarterback's responsible for the end, just like on all counter plays that you guys run and we run. Okay. Okay. So one of the good things we did last year, and I know that, you know, with Coach Aranda, Coach Fedora, we're going to continue to do, is we did a good job of matching our runs up based on the front. So we were getting different sets. And if there were two DBs to the boundary, we did this. If there were strong rotation, we did that. This game, for instance, we incorporated this drago play to where in this formation, if they were lined up in this, the Iowa State, I guess it should be called the Baylor defense now, how successful we were at last year. This defense, we wanted to run Drago into it, which was our uh, counter play into a wing. Okay, so we get the look we want, we check to this. We the safety wasn't there. If they had, you know, an extra body down here, we were going to check something away from it. So we did a great job of pairing runs. And as you see this run, this there's not a better dialed up run you're going to find. Okay, so two by two wing into the boundary. We had a we had the ability here to have an RPO up top. Um, but Charlie waved it off, so we knew we were going to just stick with the run. So we had a chance to get the mismatch we won up top. All right, so here it is drawn up. On the front side, it is blocked exactly like hammer and Q hammer. So exactly like hammer and Q hammer. So in this instance, center is blocking back. Odd, down. We're training to the backside linebacker. 86 is running a truck to the track to the front side linebacker. 55 essentially is now the kickout guy. He's like the fullback on hammer. He's going to be tied around the quad and he's kicking the first thing that shows. In this instance, it's going to be the corner. The right tackle is pulling around. Now he's essentially the guard. He's around the quad and he's pulling for the front side linebacker to the safety. In this instance, everybody's used up. We got two bigs pulling for littles. So two bigs pulling for littles is the matchup we want. The good thing about this play is when you catch him in odd, the quarterback now doesn't have to read the defensive end. Now he's reading this space right here. Because the center's blocking back, and we felt good about that back block, he's got to step flat, rip his, front, rip his right elbow. In this instance, he's a left-handed center, and just get a piece of that guy. We're really just reading the C-gap defender here who's walked. And just because he comes doesn't mean we have to throw an RPO. I'll show you in a second. So in this instance, we get everything we like. This is the look we like. This is the run we wanted to check. Here's a good look. Texas was big on Texas was big on two things. Number one, on these down blocks, these guys weren't penetrators. So 61 does a pretty good job here not getting overextended on the down block, the left guard. So he's really squared up on this guy, and then he's fighting with his left hand. You see his left hand fighting to try not get cross-faced there. 76 and 91 on these trays, we really anticipate the tight end to come off. So we're really thinking that the tight end is going to come off on, on these plays because it's such hard flow with the counter action. But the tackle's got to be ready to snap off in case of run-through. Here's a good look at the tray. 76 collects it. 91 gets to the backside linebacker, and we're off and running. 55's tied off the quad to kick out. There's a little. He doesn't want to come down here and play big boy football. Explode through him on contact. On these kickouts, we'd say, we'd say on these kickouts, if you pull left, you kick left, which that means just like the fullback. If you're pulling to your left, you want to kick with your left shoulder. And then we want to drive for five. So we want to drive for five steps after contact on kickout blocks on the counter. So as we accelerate, we'd say drive for five. Obviously not a chance to drive because the corner's in a back pedal. Tackle gets around the quad, and he's pulling for the safety. Knocked down by the tackle. Great play. And then a great finish by the back. Now the back, instead of the guard, the difference between Drago is now he needs to be in the inside hip of the tackle. We talk to our guys on counter plays, and now I'm getting into counter. But we want the relationship of the guard, the tackle, I want him one yard behind him and one yard deep. And then the back is one yard behind him, one yard deep. So it's like a staircase. So here's my guard. I want my, my tackle to be one by one, not bad relationship there. And then I want the back one by one behind him. So as you see this relationship by the back here, we're stacked. If he's behind it, he probably doesn't have to make that cut. And the ball just runs outside. But I'm not going to complain about touchdowns. You'll see here in a second. 
So on counter, we tell our guard and our tackle one by one, and then the back one by one, like that staircase there. So I'll show you that from the end zone. So here it is from the end zone. There's the kick out. Great finish by the tackle. And like I said, our guys love, when they heard Drago and they heard Hammer, the pull was wider so they really could rip and run. And it also gave them a chance to pull for little guys, which they liked. All right, here's the, here's the Drago, the counter, um, into the wing to four down. Okay, so you saw the look to four down. Here it is. So the, the key to when you want to run this play is two things. Okay, one, do I want the ball in this guy's hands? So a lot of times they can dictate if it's in his hands, obviously, in a four down counter by chasing the backside in. So if your quarterback's not a runner, this is probably more of a three down run for you. If the quarterback's not a runner, then the defensive end, if they're reading defensive ends, then obviously it's a good run. So as you look at this play for you, the one negative to this play is they can keep the ball in the quarterback's hand, as you guys understand, on a GT play. So nothing changes on the front side. Deuce to the backside linebacker. Okay, uh, You see that angle right there? That's my, You're, you're going to see why that's bad coaching. So I hate that I just did that. I, I'm showing you who they're working to, but that's why it's bad coaching. You're about to see it. If I drew it up like this, you would see it differently. These guys are running a quad to the front side linebacker. Guard is kicking. This is not a great play to show you, but it's, it is what it is. And it tackles all the way around the quad. So guard should be kicking the corner here. Tackles pulling for the safety in this instance. Okay. So I, I started with that drawing. So everybody watch 76 here. Watch the left tackle. Okay. So I started with that drawing because he thinks I'm going to deuce to the backside linebacker. So look at the angle of departure. He's crossed over. His shoulders are turned. His second step is so freaking long that his shoulders are turned. And he doesn't get to the backside linebacker. That goes back to coaching what I said a while ago. Bad coaching. If he, if he thinks his departure is there to the backside linebacker, his shoulders are going to be more square. And he's going to meet this guy. And he's going to get that backside linebacker blocked. There's the quad to the front side linebacker. We capture it. Horse crap by 74. He should be kicking out the corner here. And this thing should be out and running. Should be a huge football play. What should happen here, we get the backside linebacker blocked. 74 should kick out the corner, and 56 should be running up here all the way for the backside safety chance for a big play. We get four here. It's an efficient run, but could have been much bigger. All right, so I want to finish with this. And I think as you evaluate your offense, I think it's important to understand this, okay? So one of the things I like about Hammer and Q Hammer and Drago in this instance to three down is it guarantees a run. So I, I, I'm a firm believer in to win in football, you have to run the football. And I think as you look at our season last year, we won 11 games. The games that we won, we ran the football successfully. The games we didn't, we didn't. It's that simple. It came hand in hand for us. Explosive plays, turnover margin, and running the football. Those are the three key ingredients for us winning 11 games last year. So hammer is a run where you can call it and run it. I don't care what front they're in, what defense they're in, you're going to get it called and ran. You're going to run it. There's going to be cold games. There's going to be wet games. There's going to be four-minute offense. There's going to be fourth and ones to where you have to run the football. But I think so many times in offenses now, we get so pretty to where, you know, we're trying to get we're trying to get the ball on the perimeter. We're trying to get the ball in space. We're trying to do this, trying to do that. And that's great. But sometimes we negate the fact, the ability just to be able to run the football. So this clips to just show you the play Drago, but it's also a good learn to where you take for granted just handing the ball off. So in this instance here, our quarterback is taught just like you guys are. And as we as we, we installed the play, this was, a, this was early for us. Charlie's still learning the play, the scheme. So we've got an RPO up top to where if we got the matchup we like, we're going to throw it. Obviously, the matchup's not great here. But because of the pressure here, Charlie gets used to on RPOs, edge pressure, get rid of the ball, we're outnumbered. But because of this play in, this, in the back block by the center, really what we can teach these guys, and this is a learning tool for us as coaches at Baylor and for you guys, is just treat the outside linebacker as a defensive end. So all these run plays, just treat him as a defensive end. If he can take the dive, then you got to pull it. If he can't take the dive, then hand the ball off. It's now a run read. It doesn't always have to be an RPO. And now you're getting the ball ran. So watch this instance. He sees pressure by that defender. He feels like we can get the block outside. The numbers aren't great up top. I feel like that safety is a little low for the RPO anyway. But I just want you to see 
when you get it against an odd front, how you can just run read the SAM in this instance, or the, the nickel SAM in this instance. And look at the box. Look at the box. Okay, so watch it from the end zone. So let's go through this play one more time. Back with the center. Okay, back with the center. And this goes back to what I was saying. The RPO teams, guys that think, you know, you can run read this guy. You can still hand the ball off. Just treat him as a defensive end as long as you're blocking the four or five, like in this instance. So back with the center, down with the guard. We're going to trade to the backside linebacker. There's my wing buster. I like that matchup. We're going we're gonna to accelerate through the wing buster. My guard's kicking the corner, and we're running another big for another little. We've got everybody blocked with the exception of this safety. But because of Charlie, obviously, he sees what he sees. He throws the ball. But watch as this is dialed up. That's the matchup we want. Great job by the back, the play side tackle on the run through. So great job of him snapping off on the run through here. He's on a tray. Backside linebacker runs through, snapping off. We got everything we want. This thing's going to score. Look at that. But because of our trying to hang read and trying to put the ball in space, we did. We took for granted the ability just to hand the ball off, and we went from probably a touchdown to like what looks to be a one-yard gain here. So in your offense, and I know you guys are successful at everything you do, don't take for granted the ability just to hand the ball off and run the ball like you can in hammer and drag O to three down and Q hammer. you got to run the ball. These are plays that can win football games for you. Guys, I can't say enough to you how much it means to me to be a part of this clinic. Uh, Coach DeLeon is a tremendous mentor, a tremendous friend, and uh, just such a blessing to be a part of this. Here's my contact information. If there's anything I can ever do to help you, I know Coach Aranda and our staff, our doors are always open. There are no secrets here at Baylor University. We want to help you. We want to help your schools. We want to help you be the best you can be. And we also know you can help us in, in that same regard. Hope you and your family are staying safe during this time. I hope you enjoy this clinic. I know I, I can't wait to watch it. And uh, God bless. Sick on Bears.